Life in central Portugal goes on beautifully then, I suspect, apart from the spanner in your works 10 weeks ago, which was the terrible fire. Could you take us back to there and tell us what happened? Yes, um, it was the night of the 4th, 5th of August. Um, we got woken up by the sound of a roaring fire. Um, my neighbours had also called us to say, you know, prepare to, to evacuate and protect your property. Um, and before we knew it, within four minutes, the fire had come over the ridge and into our village. By the time we, we, we chose to evacuate because the, the picture you're showing is four minutes apart. That's how quickly the fire moved. Um, we chose to evacuate because we had friends with us who were absolutely terrified. Um, we got in the car whilst we could uh, because we live on the side of a hill. By the time we'd got up to the top of the hill, um, the fire was coming up rapidly behind the car. So if we hadn't have got out at that point, we probably wouldn't have been able to. Um, the Bomberos were fantastic. They came into the village. As we got to the top of the hill, the Bomberos were going down into the village. Um, our only issue was that because we'd left the village, we couldn't get back into the village. So when our friends were safely tucked away with some other friends, um, we couldn't get back to our house. We, could, we didn't see what was happening. Um, we have some CTTV footage of the bomb bearish around our house around our front door knocking on our front door taking wow. hose pipes across our, our front patio um, to protect our land and our property um, but we managed to get back not until the next day because the fire had just swept through our village and into the next village um, and the roads were just cordoned off until the bomb bearer said it was safe to, to come back that is a holiday your friends won't forget. I mean, they, they, that was they were coming over here for some peace and quiet, weren't they? And, and the the rural idyll of Portugal, and faced with that. Yes, absolutely. Yes, Incredible. and the, it was interesting. the The news back in the UK um, didn't share this fire at all. Um, it shared the fire that happened the week later in Odemir, down yes. the south of Lisbon, but it didn't share this fire in central Portugal. So when they went back. Um, it's, you know, two edges to a sword. Nobody knew what had happened to them, but also yeah. nobody had been concerned about them either. Yeah, and, and what I was saying earlier on is, that, you know, that news agendas move on, don't they? And, and people were, obviously, for example, in the UK, hearing about terrible wildfires in Portugal. But we know this about the news, don't we? Things move on, and it's left to the people who are feeling the direct uh, experience of this and the devastation which is you of course in this instance and it was it was a great idea of yours to say you know do, 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 might people like to know what goes on after that and and you know re, you know things can move on can't they and things can get forgotten about by the people who were once appalled by what they saw on the screen and with you you're telling us what happens in the aftermath of such um an incident which i thought was a great thing to to share this is this is is this the perhaps the a day or so after the the fire you're talking about in your locality no i took that picture this morning so oh really so that's ago, what, yes, that is yeah, the yeah, it, okay of course all right so yes, this is because we're, yeah, yeah. we're seeing some green there aren't we it wasn't we, looking we like that 10 weeks ago. no 10 weeks ago um then the day before the fire, that was a, a lush hill full of green. You couldn't make out the ridge of the hill. All you could see was trees. Um, now, most of those trees have disappeared, apart from the ones that are still living. My goodness. So you, um, you, they, so you couldn't see the thousands. hill for trees. You couldn't see the hill for trees at, at, at 10 weeks ago. Um, no. And the, fast forwarding 10 weeks, this is what it looks like now. And we're glad to see the forces of nature are back. But still, um, devastation is the smell of smoke. I mean, it's, it's clear what's happened there. Is the smell of smoke still in the air? You, you, you get a certain kind of smell, don't you, after forest fires? You do. And we had rain four weeks after the fire, which before the, before the rain came in September, it looked like a war scene. It looked like it was grey, everything was black. Um, everywhere you moved, the soot came into the house, off trees, a little bit of wind, soot was everywhere. The rain dampened all that down but also enabled the ground to be sodden, plants to start regrowing, the eucalyptus is already growing back. And yeah. now we've had some further rain and you know that's changed it again once more. You know We are now seeing lots of life coming back, trees that we thought were dead. We have a, a cork oak tree. We thought we'd lost it completely. And it's 
bloomed back into life. You know, thank God we didn't cut it down. You know, the left hand picture is where it was totally singed, virtually hardly any leaves left on it. And now look at it on the right hand side. That's that's um, a, a little blessing there, isn't it? Um, I, can't, I can only imagine. I mean, you know, we 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 we've checked in on you. We've heard about what's gone on, and we've gone off, gone about our lives. But you've lived, you've had a, a you know a daily reality of this. Tell us some of what it's like, you know, a, 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 being in this process. Yeah, immediately after the fire, um, power cuts. So there was power cuts during the fire because the the um, the local authority turned the power off just for safety reasons to stop any electrical fires. Um, but since then. Virtually on a every other day basis, we've had power cuts, uninformed power cuts at that. So you could be cooking your evening meal, and the power would go off. Sunday why lunchtime, is this? Is, is the this power would go repairing. off. They're repairing things, are they? Is that why that happened? They're repairing things. Uh, telephone lines were absolutely devastated. Most of the telephone lines in our area are still on um, old wooden posts. Right. So half of the wooden posts were just burnt to a cinder there was nothing holding up the telephone lines and because telephone lines need a small amount of electricity to replace the lines they cut off the electricity to the area and then redo the telephone lines test them take the electricity back down etc so all all of this happens without warning and it probably went on for the first three and a half weeks you'd get intermittent power cuts um, and you never knew who to contact, trying to contact EDP or Iredes or whoever. Um, mm. Nobody would say, ah, it's only going to be off for 30 minutes. It's going to be off for four hours. You, you just didn't know. Um, so, and, and then you following that phase, you virtually every single morning, apart from a Sunday, from first light to last light in the day. So earlier on, it was 6.30 in the morning. It would start through to 7 o'clock, 7.30. The chainsaws, the logger vans would come through the village and it's noise continuously. There, mm. I would have normally been outside to do this piece with you, but I can't. It's too noisy. Oh, the really? chainsaws, it, it's raining out there today and the chainsaws and the logger vans are still at it. And they've been going at it now for probably eight weeks. Oh, and there's... Right. It, the, the landscape is changing phenomenally. There are whole swathes of hillside that have no trees on them now, nothing. But yeah. you can also see all the forest tracks that have now opened up. Yeah, yeah. So you, know, you, you, you lose one view, but it's an ever-changing view at the moment. It's just a, a different landscape totally to what it was 10 weeks ago. Incredible, isn't yeah. it? This, Gary's saying here it looks similar to a nuclear blast, total, almost total devastation. When you have a serious fire, but a couple of years later, it looks like it never happened. Well, hopefully that can that can happen for you as quickly as possible. That it can return to what it looked like, or something even richer and more abundant. How have the animals? How, how's how's the wildlife cope with this, Louise? Um, remarkably well. Um, we still have evidence of foxes coming onto our land. Um, we've got. Owl spats, scats everywhere still. Um, I heard the first woodpecker last week. So they're starting to come back, oh, I'm so uh, glad which is that. really, really good. Um, probably for the first six weeks, there was virtually no sign of birds, wildlife. Um, as, as you mentioned earlier, the, the smell in the air, the acrid smell of smoke yes, and burning yes. was still there. Um, we haven't seen any evidence of wild boar coming back yet, but give it time. You know, they'll once be they back, get a bit they? more hungry, they'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> they will, won't they? And and um, yeah. at this at this time, oft, often when when we see these terrible wildfires and, and the devastation they create, um, there's a political aspect to this, isn't there? And questions are asked about the type of planting, you know, and how why it's it's basically a, you know, the, the eucalyptus and pine plantations are like tinder boxes. And I know that people were demanding. There were political groups. Um, coming together uh, not not the mainstream political groups but others others environmental and political groups saying that we need to we need to reforest portugal in an entirely different way um do you have much sympathy with their view um a bit but also then you have to look at companies like navigator who provide one percent of the gdp of portugal you know and eighty percent of its um work and is from export so you have to think well what about the overall portuguese economy yeah. but i think one of the, the key things for anybody thinking of 
buying a big swathe of you know, hectares of forestry area. Forests have to be managed. doesn't matter who owned them and what that forest is. It could yes. be indigenous species to Portugal. That forest area still needs to be managed. And that's the issue. It's bad management that mainly yes. causes these, fire, these fires. Um, you can say monocultures do strip the soil of, of, of all the nutrients that they should have, but there are other ways to put those nutrients in, even if you do have a monocultural. There's yes, a theme because... this morning, Louise, bad management, whether it's whether it's the bureaucracy or whether it's the forest. There seems to be a bad management theme here this morning, sadly. It, it is. Um, people, anyone who buys land over here has to understand the responsibility they have to that land. It's not just about having a few chickens and growing a few veg. You know, if Aww. you have a forest area, <laughs> it's not, Carl, is it? I know, if I you know. have a forest well, area, if you buy these hectares really, really cheaply, be prepared to manage them. You know what? You make a very good point here. And it is, you know, we, we, it, this is a bit of a sobering time in so many ways in the world, isn't it? And I, th I think a little bit of a sobering time when people are considering Portugal. It's as, it's as though we've had a little um, shift. You know, there's been a sort of romantic golden age of moving to Portugal and something's changing. Something else is in the air at the moment. And maybe it will change again in the future. But th that that little... Um, romantic view that you speak of there is is widely held isn't it have a few chickens grow some food um, and i'm not sure i mean it, it may be that jason's had to go off and do some things on his land because of he, ha he has to respond and manage his situation over there and people do have that romantic view don't know I'll, I'll just get myself a ruin in portugal and do it up and i'll have a few chickens and grow some food but there are there is a much bigger reality and what you have to cultivate a totally different and more practical sense of of um of life here don't you you do um, just case in point um most people from especially from a uk perspective are used to fencing around their property mm -hmm. um if we'd put fencing around our property the bomberos wouldn't have been able to get to where they got to yeah oh, they would either have had to have broken down the fences to yes. get across the land or we would have lost far more than we did. So, right. you know, there's a whole new mindset to living here. And, you know, you can't just put up a fence on your property. You have to think about, well, does it lead to somebody else's property? Is there a right of access or is there a need for the Bomberish or anybody else, e Reddish, you know, anybody to get across your land for whatever yes. reason? And right. are you restricting them? These are, these are things you wouldn't know to think really aren't they? They, they you you would just assume that you could do what you did back home so thank you for that that insight can i just finally then can i ask you if i could if sort of be a bit more personal about this has it in any way affected your uh wish to be here and your and your your sense of portugal um if anything it's strengthened our sense of community oh um, wonderful i'm so glad to hear uh, that it's, it's, yeah it's you know the, I think on the last show I was on with you, um, I'd shown a food box I'd taken down to our villagers who'd, who'd lost a lot. They'd lost their horses, yes. their, their livestock, etc. cetera. Um, now, that, the news got round. You know, we, we were greeted like old friends in the bar now. You know, we, are, we are Portuguese. We, we are accepted by our community, um, which is something we didn't expect or anticipate. We're, we, are no longer the, we are no longer the English. We are... These are our neighbours. How and lovely. that's huge. Vizinhos. We are now the Vizinhos. Yeah. Isn't it and amazing? That's a huge how, how, step. Yes, and it took this, didn't it? And often, I mean, it, what are we like as human beings? It often does take a tragedy, doesn't it, to, for us to, yeah. to drop our guard and, 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 you know, drop that fence that you spoke about metaphorically, um, as, as well as not having a fence around your property here for the reasons you gave. And here it is, perhaps the symbol then of what can happen i mean we do have this symbol don't we We have this motif of life in portugal uh usually it's you know you might come home one day and someone's left that on you on your table on your kitchen yeah. table or at least outside on your porch as a welcome pack and this these were your emergency supplies were they for for, for friends and neighbors yeah uh, specifically an old couple down in the village they're both in their 80s they lost their main hoarder um they lost over 200 olive trees they lost their goats they lost their chickens and i just took down what i could find on the day just oh, to say you. we can help you let yeah the, we care this is just yeah, the we, start. We, we care. Care. that's yeah. amazing and what happens for somebody for those people then have they been have they been helped to restart their their cottage industry um 
it, well, it's not cottage industry, it's their livelihood. Um, yeah, right. Sorry, uh, I didn't yes, mean that yes, any yes, bad. Yes, um, yes. I, you know, as in, uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, are they being helped to, to restart their lives? Yes. If, um, if yeah, the, the day after the camera was there, supporting them with the rebuilding of their barn um, and clearing out their barn area. Um, the insurance spoke, uh, you know, the number of visitors to the village has been huge. You know, right. insurance brokers, camera people, um, surveyors coming along to look at the, the forest tracks and the roads around the area, e-reddish to do all the electrical wiring. Um, we've got new new lights in the village um, mm. where we didn't have lights before. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The telephone lines have all been repaired, so that created lots of traffic. And as I said, the, the loggers. But the, this one couple, they've had a lot of support from the local camera. Couldn't, couldn't praise mm. the local camera enough for the support they've been giving them. And you might say this is And of is course the local association, yeah. Yeah, and this is why we pay taxes as well, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah to, to make that connection. Yeah, how, however yeah. little they may be, <laughs> if, you can, yes. if you consider yeah. how, you know, council tax in the UK versus IMT here. Totally different. There is no comparison. There is no comparison. There's nothing no. to complain about on that front there with, with, with the, um, yeah. the the equivalent of council tax. Gary saying wisely as well, fire is a part of life here. This this is a very useful thing to include um, as we as we thank you and say goodbye to you this morning, uh, Louise. Fire is part of life here, especially in central Portugal. And we have to learn to live with it. Having a good fire plan is an absolute must for starters. Fire gives new life to a forest. Ultimately, it's true. It's like a circle of life sort of stuff. And I bet you were glad, weren't you, Louise, that you had a good plan in place and you decided to move when you did, you know, get out of there when you did. Uh, absolutely. Grab bag was ready. Yeah. We knew how to close up the house really, really quickly and turn everything off. Um, our, our priority was to keep our friends safe and yeah. ourselves safe we took the decision to evacuate and we were ready for that. Right. Well, thank you for p putting that idea to us uh, last night of telling us, you know, what happens in the aftermath and giving us that reminder and giving us the opportunity to tell people to have a good plan in place and to see that ultimately nature comes back, uh, which is wonderful. And we're great, very grateful to you and send our love to you and your family. Um, for, you know, given what you've all been through as well, there is a, uh, you know, there's an emotional psychological side to this. So thank you so much for, for bothering to, to to share that with us this morning. You're very welcome, Carl. Have a good right. day. And I'm sure we'll speak to you again soon. Thanks, Louise. Love to the fam. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao. I was going to do a big round of applause. It just seems a bit inappropriate to do a big showbiz round of applause when we're talking about something so serious there. Uh, Eucalyptus says Garvo and Pine um, drain the nutrients stru and structure from the soil, but if they burn, it goes back into the soil. This coming spring, you'll see an abundance of wildflowers and colours. Ah, very interesting, Garbo. Thank you very much for that. Um, one more thing to add.